Good morning, everyone. It's Mrs. Cardos, and we're here for another quick little lesson this morning um, to help you with your work. And today's lesson is going to be on rounding to the nearest cent or to the nearest penny. So grab your supplies, your paper, your pencil, your notes, whatever it is you need, and then come on back to the video and let's do some problems. So our lesson target today is that we're going to be able to round an amount to the nearest cent or to the nearest penny. And as always, we're going to demonstrate this by the successful completion of a few practice problems. Now remember, you can stop the video at any time, pause it, try the problems yourself, and then turn the video back on to see if you did it correctly or not. Because that's how we get better at math, we practice it. So today we're talking about rounding money so that it looks like money. So sometimes when we're working with money, we get numbers that need to be rounded. For instance, when you're finding the amount of sales tax, tip, discount, commission, those types of things, you might get a number on your calculator that goes past the hundreds place. Now, remember the hundreds place? That is the nearest penny. That is the nearest cent. So that's the important spot that we're going to be worried about today is the hundredths place. So let's say I have this money, this number on my calculator and I need to round it off to the nearest cent or to the nearest penny. So step one is I'm going to find the hundredths place and it's pretty easy to find because it's always in the same place. So let's review a little bit of our place value. This is the ones place, this is the tenths place, this is the hundredths place, and this is the thousandths place. So I need the number that's in the hundredths place. Now for me, I like to draw a little box around it so that it helps me see what it would look like. Okay, so it might be $1.92 or it might change. That's what we're gonna have to decide. But the two is the number that's in the hundredths place. So that's how long I want my box to go. Two places after the decimal, that's the hundredths place. So once I've found my hundredths place, then I'm going to look at the number in the thousandths place. And then that will help me to decide whether or not I'm going to add a penny or not. So again, the number that's in the thousandths place is the three. Okay, so the two is in the hundreds, the three is in the thousands place. So it's either going to stay $1.92 or I'm going to add a penny and make it $1.93. Well, how do I decide? Well, there's a little rule that we follow so that we all get the same answers. And the rule says that if the number in the thousands place is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, you're going to add a penny. And so basically if it's five or bigger, you're going to add a penny. If it's less than five, you're just going to leave it $1.92. Okay, so if this number right here, okay, in the thousands place is five or bigger, then I'm going to add a penny and make it $1.93. If it's less than five, I'm going to leave it $1.92. And obviously this one is three is less than five, so we're going to round it off to $1.92. We're going to leave it $1.92. Now remember this wavy equal sign here means that it's about or approximately. So my answer to this problem would be that it's about $1.92. Okay, so let's try a problem or two and make sure that you have it. So let's practice. Again, you can pause the video and try it on your own and then see if you come up with the right answer and then turn the video back on. Okay. All right, so hopefully you tried this particular problem. So to make it look like money, I'm going to put my little box here. It's either going to stay $5.70 or I'm going to add a penny and make it $5.71. Well, how do I decide? I look at the number that's behind it in the thousands place. It is a five, so that means I need to add a penny. So it's going to be about... $5.71. I'm going to round it off to $5.71. I'm going to add that extra penny because this number is a five. Okay, and I just add one penny to the hundreds place. Let's try another one. Take a minute, pause the video, give it a try, and then turn the video back on. 
All right, hopefully you tried this one on your own. And I put this one on here in particular because students have a lot of issues with ones like this because they get confused about adding the painting. So this one is $9.99. I have a nine behind it. That's definitely bigger than a five. So I know I do need to round it up. I need to add a penny. So what do, what do I get when I add a penny to $9.99? Well, it's going to be approximately $10. Now, sometimes when you enter it into a spreadsheet or something, it may drop off the two zeros on the end and just put 10. And that's okay. That's the same answer. Those two are the same number. Let's try another one. One more. Pause the video. See what you can come up with. Okay, let's see how you did. Let's see if you have the right answer. So again, I'm going to put my box to two places after the decimal. And it's either going to stay $15.10 or I'm going to add a penny and make it $15.11. Now this problem throws some students off because they look at this 8 over here and they say, Oh, I need to add a penny. But that 8 is not the number that I need to look at. Remember, I'm always going to be looking at the number right behind the hundreds place. So the number in the thousands place. That number is a zero. So I'm going to leave my answer $15.10. I'm not going to add the penny on this one because the number in the thousands place is a zero. So we covered our lesson target for today. We rounded some amounts to the nearest penny. Remember, you can always watch the video again if you're still confused or see me with questions. Um, thanks, and I'll see you guys in class. Bye.